speaking and acting events, all the events in these two categories, the ballot, skip, the ballot for each of these events is going to look very similar. Uh, it's going to have a top sheet, which the, the, the thing I handed you, uh, the first thing that's on there is, is the, that's the sheet that they're going to use to tabulate results. So that's, that's going to go to the tab room uh, so they can figure out who won. So on that, you'll fill in. Uh, the name should already be filled in, and all the stuff on the top should already be filled in when they hand it to you. You'll fill in the titles, and uh, you'll need to keep time and fill in the time, and then at the end, you'll rank all the contestants. Uh, so it, it definitely need to make sure the time is there because there, there are some rules about going over time that, uh, that, are, that can be, could be important. So, uh, and you can just use your cell phone whatever you got. As long as, it, as long as it, you time it with something that tracks seconds, you're fine. Um, so specifically, uh, we have uh, in our public speaking category of events, uh, the first event are extemporaneous speaking. They are domestic and foreign extemporaneous speaking. This is an event where the kids have to, they, they get a topic about a current event and they have a half an hour to prepare a speech on that topic. At the end of the half an hour, they're sent to their room to compete and give their speech. Uh, and, and those speeches go up to seven minutes. I won't, I won't bother you so much with the times. As long as you're keeping track of the time, that's all you really need to do. You don't have to worry about if they're over time or not. Just keep track of what they're like. Um, but if, so these, these events are, like the current events, they're usually political in nature, or sometimes they'll ask about economics, or you know, just kind of what's, what, what, what you would consider you know, the top stories in the news are usually what you're going to see. So you'll see there'll be topics about uh, what's going on in Congress or what Obama's doing or you know what Saudi Arabia is doing with oil prices right now or uh, what Russia's doing with Ukraine that kind of stuff okay and the kids will hopefully most of them if they've done their preparation they'll cite research and they'll give you real you know here's my reasons why answer the question um, this is one of my favorite events by the way we actually <coughs> pretty good at it here um, uh, the next group are oratory events. Uh, oratory is just simply giving a speech. Um, original oratory, the students write the speech themselves, and they can quote a small number of, uh, of uh, they quote a small amount of, of their words from other sources. Standard oratory, they get a speech that someone else has written or, uh, and performed, and then they perform it, uh, memorize it and perform it. Okay. Uh, these are all, the other thing to note about all of these events are all memorized events. In extemporary speaking, they're technically allowed to have a note card with up to 50 words on it, but the better ones will not use a note card. If they, wanna, if they really want to win, they're probably not going to use a note card. Um, you may see that in novice, but probably not. Um, so you know, all these are supposed to be memorized, um, except for uh, poetry and prose is the exception of memorized that they can, they're in fact, it's required by rule that they hold the script, script in front of them. So, uh, and poetry is what you think it is, it's poetry. Prose is prose, it's storytelling. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see, what else I want to say about? Well, I'll come back to it if I think of something else about work. Um, this event down here is impromptu. It's one of the ones we're offering that's, that's different from other tournaments. Impromptu is similar to extent, uh, but uh, they get what they get is they get a prompt, they get a, a topic area, and they have seven minutes total. Generally speaking, they'll spend two minutes to prepare and then speak, and then just get on stage. <laughs> they, they aren't supposed to have research or anything like that. They just kind of, and the topics are usually um, uh, like quotes or terrible, like, like proverbs kind of things, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they, they're supposed to get up top. But, like I said, this, this event's a little bit odd. I, pro I, will, I don't intend on putting any of you in that event. I'm, I'll put someone usually to judge in there that's, that has a little bit of experience with it on it, because it's a national level event. Um, so that's the public speaking stuff. Uh, and the, and, and this is, if you've had a basic speech class, that's the stuff you're looking for. You're looking for, uh, you know, are they making eye contact? Are they, are they using appropriate gestures? Are they um, 
when they move around the room, are they doing so in a meaningful fashion? Now, pro, uh, pros and poetry, they're supposed to stand still, but these other events, uh, it, it's, it's a good idea if they you know, move around the room and while they're talking to you and uh, to emphasize what they're saying. So just basic speech stuff. What you look for in a, like a basic speech class. Uh, the acting events, my analogy for the acting events is just, you know, if you turn on the television and there's a show on, and then you flip the channel to a different show, like which show are you going to choose to watch and why? Um, it's not all, I mean, there could be any number of reasons, and a lot of this stuff can be subjective, but I'll tell you, it's, it's usually, you can usually discern, uh, you know, this, this, this person actually acted a lot, you know, their acting was a lot better, uh, their facial expressions were better, their, vo their vocalizations were better, and if you'll notice on the ballot, there's an example of a speech ballot on there. Uh, I think it's the second. I think it's the second thing that's in the packet, and it has listed. Is it? Yeah, that's what it. So, and I think that's the ballot for original oratory. So, uh, and you'll notice it has a list of kind of the the rules for the event, which don't you don't have to memorize or whatever. If it's a if uh, if you feel like you've seen an. Uh, 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 if you've seen someone speak and you feel like they've done something that you would feel was inappropriate, then you would just come and talk to me or the tab room. The tab room is where the tabulate results is going to be the the counselor's office that's right next to us here, like right by the front of the building. If you really feel like someone, you know, someone said, someone said I dropped a bad word, or someone uh, was, you know, was, it was just offensive, like whatever they did, then you just bring your ballot in there and come talk to me or someone else and we'll uh, we'll sort it out from there. There is a there is a process for protesting things, but hopefully the odds of that happening are very, very, very low. Um, you might I mean I think on average you get one protest every two or three tournaments. I mean it's not some tournaments now you get a punch and it gets crazy, but um, anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, so back to the acting events. Uh, the first group are interpretation events. This is, and all, all of these are, are single uh, competitors. A couple of these are team events. These are, all the speaking events are, are single uh, entry events. Uh, interpretation is also single entry, and it's the kids have a theatrical script of some kind, and they will uh, they'll perform the different characters and tell you, tell a story, okay? H, humorous, D, dramatic. So the humorous ones, a lot of times will have multiple characters and all the fun voices and uh, you know, a bunch of jokes in it. And the dramatic, uh, the dramatic one will be more solemn, more serious content, just like you would expect to see dramatic. Okay. And the ones with the D at the end, H, D, 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 are duet active. These are, this is a two-person team that, that does, a, does a script that performs for you. Same kind of idea. Um, one distinction of, of both the duet acting and monologue, which is one person, um, is that generally speaking, you're not allowed to have, you're not supposed to have any props. You're not supposed to have costumes. You're not supposed to have, like, no, like, it's supposed to be just purely speaking or acting ability <coughs> that, you're, that, you're, that you're grading these people on. Um, but in duet and monologue, they do get to use a chair or duet two chairs, okay? And some of the more creative duet or humorous students, particularly, uh, will use the chairs kind of as props, which they're allowed to do, um, but they'll use them creatively. Instead of just, it's a chair, um, it might be uh, you know a hospital bed or it might be, uh, we use chairs as like, cameras, you know, pretend like it's a Video camera, loose chairs for I don't know, I can't even, all sorts of stuff. So, um, but again, these are all these are all creative decisions that the students uh, with their coaches are going to make. And so, part of your job is to kind of, you know, well, I think this is a better decision, or, you know, whatever. Uh, monologue is similar to a theatrical monologue, except it's longer. Uh, when you audition in a play, you, you typically will have a monologue. You'll have one dramatic piece and one humorous piece. And in a, in a typical uh, audition, those are about a minute long each. Um, monologue is a six-minute event, so it's about three minutes long each, roughly. Okay. 
but it's the same idea. They're one humorous, one dramatic. And then du is uh, duo interpretation, which is similar to duet, except they don't get chairs. And uh, there are some other nuanced things about it, but it's the same kind of deal. It's two person acting. Um, and it can be humorous or dramatic. Uh, and uh, I mean, a lot, a lot of this can, a lot of this is subjective, but like I said, I'll tell you, you'll, you'll generally speaking, you get a round of, of six or eight competitors, and it's you can tell pretty quick who the top two or three are, and who the bottom two or three are, and then you just kind of got to figure out who belongs in the middle. Um, and generally speaking, that's what it works. You might get a really good round, you might get a really bad round. Um, so, a couple of things that I'll hear, well, this is actually really important, you probably want to write this down. This is an easy way, because when you're watching eight different speeches, uh, and you get to the end, sometimes it can be hard to look back and go, oh, okay, well, okay, this one was obviously first, and this was second, but I'm not sure, okay, what did this kid say, what was, it? What was he talking about again, what is this girl, you know, you, you have to try to run through it in your head again. Um, an easy, easy way to do this um, is use a grid. And kind of, kind of looks like this. This is this is how I draw it. Uh, something like that. That's not perfect, but you get the idea. And so, let's say I've got a room with five competitors. Okay. When the first competitor speaks, uh, I'll well, they're the only one to speak, so they're first place. Good job. And then the second competitor speaks, and I go, okay, well. Second pair is good, but they weren't as good as the first one. So I'll put one and two. Um, the third competitor speaks, and they're just amazing. Like, they blow the doors off the place. So now I can put one, and I'm going to bump these people down. Two and three. And so as the round is going on, as each speaker talks, I've got a kind of a running tally of where I think people should be. So when I get to the end, uh, I just got to kind of fit them in the rubric that I've already got set up, right? And so this this will make life a lot easier. It'll make it a lot uh, quicker to fill out your ballots, too. Um, something else I'll say, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm kind of all over the place here because I've got a bunch of things in my mind, but uh, we have four different divisions. We have championship division, we have two qualifying divisions, and we have a novice division. And uh, it's it's a good idea to think of these a, a little differently. Okay, the championship division are kids who have been winning at tournaments this season already. Uh, they're kids that have proven themselves; they've already won stuff. So the championship kids, they should be really good, and so you can be a lot more critical of what they're doing. In fact, uh, and you can ask uh, you know competitors on our team, if you're in a championship division, you want ballots that that kind of rake you over the coals, to tell you, you know these these specific things, this nitpicky stuff, whatever, whatever regardless of where you rank them, just so they have much, as much information as they can to fix it and make it better next time. Uh, and that's something I would just say generally, is write as much as you can, as much as you think is important to put on there. But anyway, so championship division, qualifying division, those are the high school kids that are, they're, they're trying to get up to championship division, they're trying to get qualified for it. And so they're gonna be pretty good. Um, and then novice division are students who are either first year or are not yet in high school, they're junior high. And so, for these rounds, when you judge these rounds, uh, more positive comments is probably better. Uh, just so that, you know, we, we want to encourage people to, you know, stay in the activity and want to do this in the future. Because if you know, get a kid going to their first tournament and they get a ballot back, they're just like, you stay, go away. <laughs> uh, they're not gonna come back. So, but the kids that are in championship division that are, you know, three, four year veterans, uh, they can handle the heat. They can handle the, the, the criticism. So. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think I mean this is just this is just theater. This is just acting. Something you think of on television or 